Good morning, St. John's. Pastor Sarah here for Wednesday of Holy Week. It is so good to be with you. It's good to be connected to you and know that we are watching together and hearing God's word as we prepare for the three days in, in Holy Week that are so important. Not that every day with God is not important. So I thank you for your faithfulness and for joining with me each day. Um, it's so hard to feel connected to others right now, and this is just a few moments that I see who's watching and I see where they are and and I'm able just to say hello. So thank you for being with me today and we'll be looking at Wednesday of Holy Week, what Jesus was doing and how it leads us to the cross. Just a reminder that um, tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, there will be worship posted at seven o'clock um, for Maundy Thursday as well as Good Friday. I'll still do the morning devotions as well because I know that we've come to like these times together and I like these times as well. Um, tomorrow evening we'll be live at the church and then I believe Friday I'm going to do as a video. Um, so, But it'll be posted right around seven o'clock for worship on Friday on Good Friday. So I thank you for your patience with me and for allowing me to figure out how to do all this stuff. I'm figuring it out each day. Um, I'm not the most technological person, but I'm certainly learning in the last few weeks, and we've learned a lot together. So thank you for that, and thank you to those who have helped me with those things. Um, it's been a blessing to share in those gifts with others. Today for Holy Week, um, we talked about Monday, Jesus was in the temple and was angry, so we had the anger emotion. Yesterday we talked that Jesus was teaching in the temple courts and teaching parables and teaching others, and so we have the angry Jesus, we have the teacher Jesus, and now today was probably a day kind of, kind of a day apart for Jesus. Um, time to pray, time with friends, a chance to have quiet before the lots of activity that was coming in the next few days. It would have been a day that the people were preparing for Passover, as Passover would begin at sundown that day. And so, you know, the women, especially in the families, would have been preparing the meals and getting ready for the celebration of Passover and the remembrances thereof. And the people would have been doing what they needed to do in order to sit down and have those days together. Um, Jesus, we know, visited with his friends and took time apart. Um, maybe he was just tired. He had traveled from Bethany to Jerusalem and had done all those things. And he had taken that time. He decided that that was important to be with his friends, to perhaps have a meal with them and to connect with them in some way. I know one thing I've been reading a lot lately is that, you know, things online that say, you know, are you taking more naps than normal? That's okay. That's your body, you know, dealing with all of these things that are around us. And I, I've never been ashamed of the fact that I love to take a good nap. I know others have known that about me. And, and there's something to be said about our body needing quiet and needing rest to rejuvenate and to find that time together and to find that strength to go on. And so perhaps this was a day that Jesus, perhaps maybe he took a nap. I'll, I'll say that he did. Let's say he did. Jesus took a nap on Wednesday um, because it was just a time to rejuvenate and rest. We don't know that for sure, but I'd like to think so. It makes my naps a lot more justifiable. But anyway, um, I'd like to do a reading today from Matthew. Again, we're in the Gospel year of Matthew, and so we hear a lot from the Matthew Gospel, though on Good Friday we hear from the Gospel of John to hear Jesus' passion. Um, and, but we're going to read from the 26th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 6th verse. Now while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, and she poured it over his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, Why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. By pouring this ointment over my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news and proclaimed in the world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. 
In Matthew's version of this text, we don't know who this woman is. It's just a woman. And we often picture this scene with her, this woman wiping her wiping Jesus's feet with his hair with her hair anointing his feet but in this one she anoints him over the head pours this whole jar of oil over him this whole alabaster jar and it was probably an expensive thing it actually ties back to when Jesus was born because one of the things that was brought to him by the wise men was myrrh which would have probably been in oil form And it was an anointing oil. It was used in burial. It was used to prepare a body. It was used to take away the smell of death. And it always strikes me when we read the Christmas story that Jesus was given embalming oil, basically, for a birthday gift. And we don't always think about that because we don't necessarily think about what myrrh was. But then we get to this story, which is just days before his death, where someone is anointing him with that same sort of oil. And so it's amazing to me that those two stories can be marked together in such a way that we know that Jesus was coming to earth to die. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son to die. That's the reality of it. And we hear in little pieces and in little clues all along the way that Jesus was coming to die. And this woman anointed him for death. She anointed him for burial days before his death, perhaps not knowing what she was doing, but instead lifting him up, not selling the oil, not holding it, not hoarding it, but instead anointing Jesus as king. We don't get that chance, but we do get the chance to witness his death again and to wait for his resurrection. We are blessed, brothers and sisters, to have that gift. Even if we're doing it in a very strange way this year, not together, not doing the things we want to do, not doing our traditions, but we are still together. And that's important. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the actions of this unnamed woman in Matthew who pours oil over your head, preparing you for burial, anointing you as the holy one you are. Help us to follow your example this day and perhaps connect with a friend in some new way. Spend time with our families. Spend time in rest if we need it. Allow our bodies to be given new life so that we can serve you in the coming days. Give us hope, Lord. Be with those who serve you and their vocations of medicine and of service and of supplying needs for others and of guiding others, Lord. Be with them. Keep them healthy and strong. And when they need rest, give that to them as well. Hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you again soon tomorrow. Again, we'll still have our morning devotions each day, and then there will be worship tomorrow evening and Friday evening posted at 7 o'clock. So have a wonderful day, my friends. Rest if you need it. That's okay. Even Jesus took time apart from others, and you might need to go hide in a room or a closet right now to do it, but we'll be able to find that rest. Take good care, my friends, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye now.